Hey everyone, Ryan here. Um, today I'm going to do a short series on screen packs. I've gotten a lot of requests for screen packs and I put some files together and I'm finally going to do it. Hopefully this won't take as long as a character, it'll be much shorter. And if with a careful planning, it'll be a lot easier too. So, I'm going to name my screen pack the Mugen. The mono collection. Why? Because I've decided to use black and white monotones. Um, I, I think it's easier to teach people using such simple elements instead of a full blown colorful uh, rainbow coalition of a screen pack. So, this is what my title screen is going to look like, and the words are going to be here. And this is what my uh, select screen will look like, and these are the icons that I drew up. See, I did some little anti aliasing to it to make it look smooth. And you can't really t see it's close up, but far away it looks it looks great. So I made two sizes. Um, this is for 50/50 portraits, and this is for 25/25 portraits. Um, I cannot use both. I have to use either or. This is for regular portraits. This is for player one. This is for player two. And the yellow is for after the player has selected that character. And these boxes here are for names. Now see if everything is planned out well. Then it's gonna look great, you know. It's gonna it's gonna be uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's gonna be symmetrical. You want to have the same amount of pixels on the left side as you do on the right side, as you do on top, as you do on the bottom. You know, it has to be symmetrical all the way around, or else it won't look right. It'll look kind of funky. And the next image is my option screen. <clears throat> now, I know it's kind of plain and there's nothing really here, but that's that's the tone I'm going for as you can see there's nothing really there for the rest of them either and this is the versus screen I didn't finish drawing this yet so maybe this will be in part two now um, first off you need a blank Mugen this is a brand new Mugen that I have not edited at all this is what it's um, this is what I'm going to use to make the screen pack as you can see here this is the first time I'm running it this is the basic Mugen um, 1.0 change controls Okay, so this is what I'm going to use. Now, first thing to do is gather your resources. Since I'm making my resources, this here, I'm actually drawing all this stuff. And so I'm also separating everything. Like, for instance, this here is the Mugen logo, which is going to display on top. It's a separate object, a separate image, actually, because I'm going to code it as a separate object, so I have total control over the movement of this single image. This is the uh, generally white background that appears on almost every screen. And that's the first screen I'm working on. And then I have all these sprites here, which are uh, the objects, the, the the icons and stuff um, that's you know singled out. So I can move them however I want to. This here is a uh, basic idea of a MOTIF, M-O-T-I-F. Basically, um, this is one of the ways you can make your screen pack. Now, I could put this in the game and align everything to match up perfectly but instead I'm gonna have them in the folder here and use them as a um, like a general idea of how the select screen can be done so this is using the 5050 and as you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 slots I hope I counted that right so this is a small 23 slot roster for some people who don't want a big Mugen but want you know, a good amount and this is for people who want a big Mugen, but not an insanely big Mugen, you know? This is a lot more slots, and as you can see how I made it up, it's uh, it's all it's all boxy, you know? It's all from like here, here, and here. This is all the space, pretty much, in this box. You cannot do, you can do things like, things like this, uh, um, diagonally, but you can't do it in an angle. I know it looks like it could, but you can't, because uh, these little edges I put here, the edges around it kind of throw off the, um, the look of it. But anyways, this is the style I'm going to go for in the uh, tutorial video right here. I'm going to make both of these, so you can use whatever. It may look it'll look a lot better actually when I'm actually done with it. And this is another um, way to do it. It's like a, a backwards letter Z, and with more slots. This is a Samurai Showdown, uh, I think six style select screen with more slots. And this is a traditional um, traditional fighter one. I forget which game has it. I think also Samurai Shodan has this as well. And more slots. And that on top, and more slots. And these are just the um, big portrait holders. 
Big Fortress go here and names go here. I like to accommodate player two, three, and four for the teams. This way, when the name shows up, it shows up here, 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 and here instead of just here, 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 or somewhere else. It doesn't look right. You know, I like to accommodate everything. So these are the sprites I'm going to use for the whole screen pack, and this one, the verses which I have to draw. Now, um, I'm going to use Fighter Factory Three to load up the um, the SFF file. Now, before I actually show anything, um, your Mugen has a data folder. Your system files are in your data folder. System, select, configuration, fight for life bars, common for the characters. Now, by default, Mugen 1.0 will not read this, um, these two system def files. Instead, it's going to read the Mugen 1 def file. The reason why is because in your Mugen configuration file here, it says motif equals data slash Mugen 1 slash system.def. So it's saying in the data folder, in the Mugen 1 folder, this one here, is going to read this system.def. So if you're making a screen pack from scratch, this is the one you want to edit. And it, this is what it looks like, really. Now, I'm not making a Mugen uh, screen pack for this size, so I need to make it smaller. So 640 by 480 is the size I'm going to use. My name is Rayon. The screen pack will be called the Mono Collection. Collection. There we go. And I, all these things that have these um, colons, semicolons, whatever the hell they are, this is all comments. Anything we see with this is a comment. So I don't need these comments. I don't need this comment. I don't need this comment. Now, this is just me being picky because I don't like my stuff being messy. There's a lot of stuff to clean up too. Now, see here, file. This pretty much locates everything in your screen pack. Uh, this is the sprite file for your system, uh, for your uh, for your screen pack. Um, SPR equals system.sff, which is located right here, as you see. Uh, sound file system.snd, that is located right here. Then you have your um, what is it? Oh, okay. Then you have your logos, intro, select. By default, these are all read from the um, data folder, except this one. I'm not sure why this is read from the same folder it's in. Or maybe it just checks both directories. It checks the data folder first, then it checks the Mugen 1 directory, or whatever directory you put in. But, um, okay, so this is for um, your select screen, and this fight is for your life bars. So I'll just put them up here, life bars. I will post this up in the, the second video or third video when this is all done. Uh, select screen. Yeah, this is all self-explanatory here. Don't need this. Or this. These are all fonts that you can use throughout Mugen. Uh, well, throughout the system um, screen pack, not the fighting. This is only used for um, screen pack stuff here. The fight.def has its own set of fonts. Uh, by default, you have six, and you can erase um, whatever you want. But I like to keep the default ones these, and uh, I believe you're allowed to use up to nine fonts. So, just gonna erase that. Now, these are all the fonts. I'm gonna leave that alone. This one here, JA dot files. This is for Japanese language. If you have a Japanese language set, and uh, I do not, so gonna erase that. This is for music. I never understood how to use loop. Uh, loop start, loop end. So I I just leave it blank like that. And you can you can all read this little notes that they left here, and it'll explain to you. But it's pretty straightforward how to use music for this stuff. This controls the um, title screen, where the arcade versus, uh, where the menu icon uh, items are located and how they're positioned. The positions right here, as you see. The font for the uh, menu um, icon items. Uh, the font for the active menu item, which is what you're selecting, so you know what you're selecting. Uh, fade in and out from the screen, what the words are going to say. Like, say you want to have story mode instead of arcade mode, you just type up story mode. You know? simple thing like like that but you know if your characters don't have a story then it's kind of pointless so our oh, let me, I'll, I'll do a silly name just for the heck of it um, epic battle to the top 
I'll save that. Uh, let's see how it looks in Mugen. It's going to look funny in Mugen, actually. See? It's going to look funny because in the system, I have local core 64480. However, in the configuration file, I have game width and height 1280, 720. We need to use the same resolution. So, 640 and 480. Now, if you use an awkward resolution, Mugen's going to scale the um, option screen. Uh, vector S SX Vector says that it you can uh, always scale that, but I've never found the moment that it'll scale it. So Epic Battle, you can't see the rest because it's cut off the option screen, of course, because I'm using it for proper value. Now let's see. Before we get onto any of this other hoopla, I'm gonna go over to the SFF. Not this. Oh wait, I didn't open it yet. Uh, I'm going over to the SFF and I'm going to load up my new, my sprites. These are all the ones that are in Mugen 1.0 right now. I kind of don't need any of these. So let's see this here is uh, that. We'll delete that. In fact, uh, I think I possibly could delete everything here. You know what, I'll just make a new sprite file. New sprite file. Now this may go horribly wrong or horribly right, depending. Um, I would recommend that you overwrite the. Where is my folder? Okay, I would recommend you overwrite what's already um, what's already in there instead of adding sprites like what I'm doing here. But you'll basically get the idea of it. So for alignment, um, I don't crop anything because I align them in iDraw, so it's easier for me to um, set up and stuff. Yeah, see, these are all from the old sprites, which we don't need, so I'll delete all these. Look at these split. Okay, uh, wrong thing. Okay, let's do it again. Whoops. So, title A. Don't crop a line like that. Good. That's title A. This is group 0, index 0. Now, for the logo, title B, this will be group 1. A line there. Crop the image before access. I'm going to put the first image as an as a onion skin so I can see what I'm doing with this. So see how it looks now? It looks, see those white outlines? That's bad normally, but in this case, you won't see it. It makes it look smoother, so it's okay. Now you just try to align it um, the way it would look on screen. So when you code it, you can have the zero value instead of having some crazy number to align things. This works easier for me. I think it works best for everybody, honestly, if you actually did this. Now, that was that screen. We need to add the option screen. This is for options. This will be group two. I'll align there. Access. Okay, so I'll I'll leave this at uh, I'll leave this at the center so I have total control over it. Uh, I don't know what I did though. Uh, let me let me re-add this one actually. Yeah, center two crop before access. Good. Now, I'm going to save it as Mugen 1.0 because if you use the beta, um, you can't use... Uh, um, well, you could use the beta, actually. I just, I've just gotten used to using um, the new 1.0 um, SFF2 files. So, we have the white background, the title, and the option screen icon. This white background is going to be everywhere. The title screen, the option screen, the select screen, the versus screen. Next we need the player icons. Now I'm going to add them all at the same time. This is going to be group 5. I'll align them to 0 and remove the... Um, I'll crop out the other parts. Now see the thing to this is um, all portraits are going to be aligned from here. The bottom right of the axis. So all of the images need to be aligned like so. Wait a second. There, like so. See, so when the picture comes, the picture is going to take up this space here. Simple. So now I have to move them all to that one spot. And there. Oh, wait, is that right? No. It's a bit too. There. Okay. Okay, so see? So they're all in the same spot. Easy to differentiate. 
I forgot to do something there. Hmm. Okay, so I'll add the image. Take that. Take the pen tool and turn this all invisibility. Oops. Damn it. That pen, blah, blah. Oh. Maybe I can select it all and delete. And delete does not work. Wait, maybe I can select it all and take the hand. No, that does not work. Okay, so I just, I really need the pen here. Perfect. I didn't see I could do that. Okay, so that's gone, that's gone. It's not really gone, but rather it's on the first color here, as you've seen the palette. You can select the color and you can draw that color. And the first color is going to be the alpha color, which is the invisible color. So erase all of that. Then file, save as current sprite. Close. See? So then this is the where the portraits are. Then this is the select icon on top of it. This is the other select icon for player too. Oh, crap. Okay, now. Save as current. Close. Good. Next one. Save. Again with the black. Okay, good and good. Save as current. Good. So now, these are the select icons right here. Icon behind the player's portrait, small portrait. Uh, player 1 selector, player 2 selector, finished selector. Now, I'm going to have this screen pack with two various sizes. Uh, a lot and small. Now, this is the same thing. I'll put it as group 6 instead of 5. And alignment is more or less the exact same. It just may look a bit harder on bigger sprites because... I don't know, finding that pixel is kind of hard. There. So now let's, wow, big old box. Oh, not the right color. Oh, crap. Okay, so save as current. Yep, see? I'll zoom out a little bit. Next image, same thing again. Um, I forgot to do this when I was making the uh, sprites, but it's okay. It, it's not really that long to fix, and for the most part, um, I guess it helps a bit to see me mess up time and time again in my videos. Makes you feel better about yourself, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm sure it does. I keep doing that. Okay. Oh, by the way, while I'm on the subject of making stuff, I want to thank everyone who subscribed to me recently because before I had all these subscribers I had like 40 something now I have like 68 so uh, thank you all for the subscriptions it's really nice of you and I hope you all enjoy the screen packs um, let's see what else am I missing here oh yeah player one and player two things so seven uh, crop there we go okay because this is kind of a strange little image I'm going to align it to the top here as well. Just because I, I feel it's easier for me to work with if it's aligned there like that. And this is just strictly my personal preference. You don't have to do the alignment the way I do it. I just like to do it this way because it makes sense to me. Okay, so I'll save that. Next. So, let me see. We changed the Mugen configuration to 64480. We changed the screen pack to 64480. Let me just test it now to see if it actually works 64480. Ah, errors. Yes, lots of errors. Um, I'm going to get a lot of errors because of these codes here for this stuff. Zero. I'll, I'll go over this in a second. Let me just do something quickly. Okay, see all these things I'm erasing? Uh, it's kind of important that I, I tell you what this is first, but I guess I kind of already passed that point. But basically, what I'm erasing here are the images and codes for the screen pack that are uh, more or less needed, but I'm replacing everything with just blank whiteness. Uh, you remember that first image I put in? The SFF, that's what I'm replacing it with. So the screen pack is going to be blank, see? So, okay, it works 644.80. 
everything's all dandy. Select screen's all dandy. Everything's white, and that's the first image you see, like going up there, like that, just, just floating versus screen. Nothing. Fight screen. Regular life bars. Now. Ah. <sighs> okay, this is a lot of ground to cover, but um, all right. Let's start off with the basics, I guess. So, I've explained what all these are. These are the files that are located in the data folder that Mugen requires to run. These are font files. Um, music stuff, you already know. Uh, this I kind of explained a little bit of this, but um, before I do that, I'm going to go on to making a font. Now, I don't know how to make fonts. I'm doing this the best of my ability, which is not that great. And here's what I'm going to do. The old way of making fonts where you make an image, you save it as PCX, you use Font Maker, which is like somewhere somewhere here. I don't even know where it is anymore. Font Maker. You use this and you pretty much locate all the sprites on the little actors grid and dang it. Mugen 1.0 supports true type fonts. So what are we going to do? We're going to use a true type font. I'll show you the easiest way to use a true type font. First, you take a true type font, copy it. Right here, true type font. Copy it to your font folder. Next, you take a uh, font such as, let me see, MS Gothic. Okay. Um, okay, see, MS Gothic is a type equals true type. I'll just copy, paste. Oh, not that. Copy, paste. And rename it to match the exact same thing as my actual font. Now, if you're using a font like, say, Comic Sans, or Arial, which are already in your um, by default in the computer uh, Windows uh, font folder, like located here in um, in your Windows section of the form, like really deep in there. Anyone, if you use any one of these, wait a second, one of these, you don't have to put them in a um, data folder. But if you're using a font that no one else has, you have to put it in a data folder. So we start off with this. Then okay, so we open up this. This is the font version two file which only works in Mugum 1.0. Uh, don't change this, it says. So we'll leave that. Name of the font. The font name is Epic Awesomeness. The font Arthur is not uh, Microsoft. Uh, I'll get the right Arthur right now, actually. The font. New font. Page 3. I think. No, page 2. Okay, wait, 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 did I pass it? No, 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 page four? This is a good website for fonts. Um, here we go, Zachary Lucier, Lucier. Huh. Okay, so he's the author of the font. This is a true type font, type equals true type, yes. Size of font, width and height, only height is used for true type fonts, okay. So, 36. This is width, this is height. This is the only number that's going to be 36. Spacing between font glyphs. Only height is used for true type fonts. Again, spacing will be 1 1. So it'll be one like pixel away from each other. Uh, draw, drawing offset. This is positioning offset. In case you want your font in a slant or something, which I don't think anyone really does that. It's strange. File name of the font to load. We'll search Windows font directory if not in current directory. Meaning, if the font you asked for is not in, in the font folder, it's going to search the font folder in your uh, your uh, Windows directory. Now, if it is, it's going to load that up. So, MS Gothic TTC will be, oh crap, not his name. It will be Epic Awesomeness. And this is a true type file. See, TTF, true type file. So, I'll have to put F instead of C. I don't know what that C stands for. And then, preferred blending mode. 0 equals none, 1 equals blended. I'll show you how 0 looks. And these are all little notes here. Okay, so epic awesomeness. I'm going to add this font to Mugen. Font 7 equals epic awesomeness dot def. The old fonts use dot fnt because that's for the format they're in. See? Dot fnt. And the new ones use def, their definition fonts. That's why definition files. Okay, so that's the default thing still. So going down to wait, how the oh my god, twenty five minutes and I didn't do anything yet. Okay. Now going down to the um, actual title screen here. Um, 
this is all positioning. This is the menu item font. This font, the first number here, is the font to use. It's going to use font four. Font four is arcade.def. The second number is um, color. If you're using a old FNT file, a regular font file from Mugen 1.0, I mean a regular uh, WinMugen, then you can use a color like one, two, six, seven, eight, whatever. But they have to be within that sprite's um, palette. Otherwise, it won't. It'll show black, and that's why uh, fonts have errors. And the last number here is um, facing. This means the fault. Um, actually, you know what? This isn't facing. I think this is like centerizing. Yeah, it's it's centerizing. Because if I put um, a negative one, it's gonna align to the left. If I put zero, it aligns in the center. And if I put one, it aligns to the right side. So we'll leave this on zero. So we we want to use font number. 7 epic awesomeness so we'll change this to 7 and we'll change this back to arcade mode so now we'll just check Mugen ah see how see how it appears down here very pixelated see you know what let me centerize that menu position 640 and 380 now give or take uh, where is oh what's here Okay, give or take, your Mugen screen is 640 by 480, right? The option, the, the positioning for this is 640, 380. So, here, here, here's how it works. So, this is 0. This is 0, 0. This is 640. And then we go down to 380. So, 380 is somewhere like right here-ish. So, this is where the icons are really drawn to this spot here. We don't need them here. We need them like here in the center, right? So what's that position going to be? That position is going to be something like 320, 240, which is the center actually. So we need to change the position to 320, 240. Now the important thing to remember is that 0, 0 access on Mugen uh, in general is top left. See how the sprites look now? Uh, the fonts, I'm sorry. See how they look? Kind of rigid and jaggedy. Now when I go here and I put blend to 1, it looks much smoother. See? I can barely see them too, so I'll show you. Well, we're finished with the font. That's all we need to do. Next, I'll show you a trick which is new to Mugen 1.0 and does not work in uh, Win Mugen. Um, you add another comma, uh, comma, then 0, 0, 0. These next three zeros are colors. Red, green, blue. Now, say you put a font like what I just have, white, right? I'll put, copy and paste this here as well. Okay, so this here is pretty much turning all my fonts black because black on the the uh, color charts are going to be zero zero zero. Now, my active one, which is what I'm using to select, is going to be the same font except it's going to have two fifty six on red, so it's going to be red when I select my uh, stuff. See? Nice and red. Now if I change it to 256 here, this is green and this is blue. So, oops. So when I check it now, it's going to be white. See? So this way I can have smooth looking uh, fonts for here and have, uh, you know, have them whatever color I want when I select them. See, the only problem with this is um, if you use a true type font, you can't have detail on them. It's only going to be monotone colors, which is perfect for this. Um, here's a little note for the arcade mode stuff. Um, you know, you can name your you can name your modes whatever you want: arcade versus team arcade, team co-op, whatever. If you want to get rid of a mode, like say you want to get rid of the options, you simply delete it and leave the two um, quotation marks just there, like that. And then when you actually play your Mugen, you're gonna see there's no there's no option. It's just a watch and exit. See? So but we want options because people change controls and stuff. Now, um, the window margin is basically uh, from the font's point of view. I'm not sure how this uh, is actually on works, um, but imagine this is the font here, right? The margins Y um, basically says how many pixels to view. Um, up and down, so mm, it's hard to really explain this. Uh, maybe I could do it in the uh, paint. Okay, so 
A. Jumbo size. What is that loading? Oh, okay. Jumbo size. Okay, jumbo. Okay, it didn't work. Jumbo size. Okay, so I uh, I'm not fully sure about this, but I, it works when I mess around with it a lot. So per se, this is uh, margin y zero zero. Now we have to go up a certain amount of pixels and down a certain amount of pixels. And I think the way the number works is it goes down forty and it goes up thirty four. And that should be the full image itself once it's um, out like that. So you just alter these numbers until you see your fonts properly the way you want to. Uh, visible items means how many items you want to show up on your select screen. Uh, sorry, um, how many items you want to see on your menu. That's five. Let's set it to two. And we'll see how that looks. See? It's only showing me two. Well, two and a half, really. You're only seeing three because of the um, the margins. That's why. Uh, this is in case you want that bluish box that's like always around the words. You can't see it now because of that, but um, well, this is not necessary anymore because the background's white. You won't see it. Uh, this is the box chords. This is um, X left. Um, yeah, this is X left, um, Y up, X right, Y down. So it's it's kind of confusing, and these are just sounds for um, you know pressing up and down. Uh, done is when you hit the enter button, and uh, cancel sounds when you hit the back button. And um, I'll I'll probably fix this up in a second properly. I'll erase all that. Okay, so now title background definition. This is what tells you your. Uh, this is what uh, decides your background for the title screen. If you are familiar with stage coding, this is more or less the exact same thing. If you are not, then it's the exact same thing. So you have two types, normal and animation, or A-N-I-M -A for short, anim. So that's the type. It's going to be a normal single sprite. The layer, uh, I mean, sorry, sprite number is going to be 0, 0. We look here in the SFF, this is 0, 0. That's what it's going to be. The layer number is going to be zero, which means it's in back of the um, the uh, menu items here. Start position is going to be zero zero because it's going to start on zero zero. Uh, one strange thing I notice is for screen packs, when you start on zero zero, it doesn't start at the top or left. It starts in like the middle. I'm not sure why. Uh, tiling is if you want to tile to the left or tile to the right. Uh, you can use other numbers like two, three, four, and those numbers are more complex to use. So unless you know what you're doing, and if unless you use them as stages, do not use them. Instead, just use one or one one or you know zero zero or whatever. But um, we don't need tiling, so we'll get rid of this. Velocity. This is the movement of the image. As you see here, it says um, negative one, which is left, and then negative one, which is up. So it's going to move um, to the up left. See. There it goes. Up left. It's gone. It's bye. Come again. Okay, so that's gone. We don't need that, though. So we'll just get rid of that. Window is a very funky special item. Um, it basically tells you your object, this whole thing here, this object is allowed to work in the resolution of 0, 0, the top leftmost pix pixel, and um, this is uh, 1280 uh, 334, which is the a bottom, a far right bottom pixel. So instead of being able to, so like say this is our window, right? If we use a window code, instead of being able to use the whole thing, we limit it to only working like this far. So if you have an animation playing, that animation will only be shown in here and nothing out here. This will be whatever else you want it to be. This can be used very fancy for um, backgrounds of player select. Uh, like big porches or something. We don't need window either. By not having this code, it automatically means you're allowed to use any part of the screen. Now, we're going to need to put the logo in. So, title BG, background top. We're going to name this logo, and we'll name this just background because it's only one background. So, the sprite number for the logo is group 1, index 0. Group 1, index 0, start equals 0, 0. Now, this should work, look, this should look perfect. Okay, almost perfect. I'm getting there. 
you see how there's this little green, the, the teal color, which is our transparency color? Uh, it's not transparent, obviously, so we have to fix that. This works in stages as well. Um, there's a code called mask equals 1 or 0. Mask basically says, should I have my transparency? 1, yes. 0, no. So, do we want the transparency for the logo? Yes. So, save. And that uh, does not work there. And there you go. And look at that. It looks very smooth and everything too, right? And the options, I mean, the, the menu items look pretty good too. Let me make the menu items a bit bigger because they seem a bit small. Now to edit the, uh, the font size, because I'm using a true type font, I can just go into the font def and make them larger. I think I can leave this in zero and change this to like 40. And it'll play right. Because if you read the, the note, it said, um, it said that uh, it only takes in account the, uh, the height, not the width. And it still works perfectly fine. See, look at that. It looks much better now, actually. Yeah, except, you know what? I can't see the mode I'm on, so we got to fix that. Let's scroll up a little bit. Make this... Uh, I like red. I also like orange, but that's, that's just personal taste. Okay, so... You know what? I think I will use the yellow or, or orange. So see? Arcade mode. And these are true type fonts, so they, I set them to blend, so they blend in just like the logo here. So it looks much more smoother than you think, you know? And we gotta fix how many icons show up. Um, let's see. Um, three, four. Uh, okay, I guess I can go with four icons showing up. Okay, so four visible icons, and I have to mess with the um, the Y margin to make it look right. So let's see how the four look. Okay, one, one, two, three, four. Then that. Okay. Okay, so we need to get rid of some pixels down here. Let's try. Now, if you edit this while Mugen is open, nothing's going to happen. There's no um, fault for that or anything. There's no issue with that. But, you know, you won't get the um, effects right away. You have to close it and open it back up. Okay, so you see, just now I um, I increased this value from, from 34 to 50, and it shows more of team co-op. So let's try 20. Stop that. And 20 cuts off it, so that's that's good. That's what we want. So it looks like a little more, and I'll cut it off completely. So 15. I think I may have cut too much there, but uh, no, that looks good. Yeah, okay. See, that looks good. And if you do this, you can see the border of where those lines actually are. All I'm doing is hitting up and down. Okay, so let's lower this down a bit more to the center. Uh, 240 is good, but let's try 260. I just want it a bit lower so it looks like, you know, it looks better. A little bit lower, uh, 80. Now, positive numbers go down, negative numbers go up. So if I use a negative number, it'll be like, it'll be going up like this, and this is zero. So negative one, negative one, two, three, all that will be up here like this. Positive one, two, three will be all the way down here like this. And this is like negative. Uh, 280 like right here or something right in the middle of this so you see that's the title screen pretty simple right now let's go to the option screen because they're very similar they're right there together um, option screen are located all the way at the bottom now just like before all the codings are more or less the same uh, normal sprite normal type uh, sprite will be the same thing for the background start and zero zero tiling we don't need velocity we don't need what we do need is that little box that I made. This will be background, and this is going to be the box. Now, what sprite is that? That is sprite number two. So, two. Start position will be zero, zero. I'll have to definitely change this because this is not uh, predetermined like I did the other thing. And mask equal one because I do not want to show transparency. I mean, yeah, I. I want to show transparency, that's what I meant to say, yeah. See, there's my box. Boxing around, I have to lower it, as you can tell. Lower the box. And let's try number 250. I meant 240, but I mistyped it. Okay, a bit too low there. 230. 
Nope. Almost right. Twenty. Two twenty. Almost wrong. Twenty-five. See, this is the hard part of actually making screen packs. Trial and error everything you do. Because twenty-four. Because um, no, not twenty-four. Because it's the only way to really see what you're doing and to get the the idea of how you're doing it well enough. See, now I drew this um, by taking a screenshot and uh, finding the sizes to how the where the box is. It's not something I just made up and got right. It, I actually planned this out. So you see how there's like one little line of trans pixel around it, so it looks cool. So that's that. Then there's options there. So. This is new to also to uh, Mugen uh, 1.0 is the options for the uh, the title for the option screen the words that says options on top. This is also new to that. So I'm just gonna change it to um, the font that I had up there in the title screen, so they match. You know, so trying to keep everything symmetrical and the same. Okay. Uh, that looks good, but see these lines kind of get in the way, so I'll bring it down here. So that'll be like 480 is our max uh, for the for the Y value, because 480 is the bottom of the screen. So let's try four, four, uh, 420. Not close enough. Let's try 450. Good. Now a little bit more, just to make it look better. I like to have things looking as um, symmetrical as possible. That's good. Now I'll just change this to like 58. That'll look, make it look probably look perfect. And I'm only getting these um, sizes from just looking my eye. So option screen, pretty much everything is here. See? Then the main menu is done itself. Then training is like a mess. But we'll fix this. How much time do I have left? 42 minutes. Okay. Um, Alright, so let's keep going from the title screen. This is the info box. This is everything. When you press F1, this is the stuff that's going to come up here like this. So instead, I'm just going to put, Hi, everybody. Wait. And then, oh, wait. Ryan says, Hi, everybody. Everybody says, Hi, Dr. Nick. <laughs> if anyone gets that reference, I don't think anybody will. And this is the Japanese info box. I do not have the Japanese font, so I erase it. This is also the text box uh, font, which it will use. It's going to use font 6 by default. You can change it to whatever you want, but the spacing is kind of funky. See? Ryan says, hi, everybody. Everyone says, hi, Dr. Nick. Next is the select screen. Ooh la la. Now, I think I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with this mod if, uh, select mod of B, and for first, uh, the first one's going to be select mod of B. Now, let's count the boxes with, uh, with me. One, two, what, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Now, from that's the left right now, up and down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 by 14. So rows. Rows are left and right. We have 10. Columns are top to bottom. We have 14. We have 14 long columns that go 10 um, to the side. Wait, how does that make sense? Huh, how does that make sense? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Whoa, crazy. Then the positioning for all the boxes. The positioning is going to be um, 0, 0 up here and 640, 480 down here. So, give or take, this goes off like this, this goes off like this. This looks like um, uh, maybe 10 from the left and 50 from the top. Show empty boxes? Yes! Move on, move over empty boxes. Yes, cell size. Cell size determines the size of the character's portrait. We're doing the small ones first, so this is going to be 25, 25. That's the character's portrait size. Actually, you know, what? I think 27 because um, 
Uh, maybe it's 25 actually. Yeah, 25, 25. Spacing will be 10 for now. I'll, I'll change it depending on how it looks. Cell background sprite. The background sprite will be group 5, index 5. This is a sprite that's going to show up behind all the character sprites by default. Random sprite. I didn't think of a random sprite. A random uh, switch time. This is how many um, how many different uh, characters it will fly through in a random. I didn't think about that. But anyways, um, we'll do the at and uh, let's see how it looks. Okay, so see how it looks now. All the boxes are so close together. That was kind of cool, actually, like a design. But that's not what I'm aiming for here. So I need to space them out. And obviously, the spacing is not enough. So let's try 15. I'm getting there. Still not enough. Uh, 20, I, no, 18. I may have miscounted, so I'm, maybe I'm allowed more. Okay, I did not miscount. I did right. So these are all the uh, character selection boxes, right? And these are the portraits and stuff. So let's fix the obvious things first. Let's get this in the center. So what I like to do is take a crap load of screenshots. So like screenshot of that, press F12 to get a screenshot easy. Go over to edit in paint, then I count them. So this is one, two, three pixels off to the left, and this is 37 pixels off. So three, 37, Okay, let's just move this over, uh, say, 30. Uh, that's probably a really high number, and it's probably not the right number at all, actually. Uh, it's actually pretty close there. And See, I end up taking a lot of screenshots just to make it all symmetrical. And it really is worth it in the end. You will thank yourself for doing this. And this one, this time it's 23, right here, the value 23. And this is... 17. So the difference between 23 and 17 is 6. So give or take, subtract 6, 27 here. And this should be censored now. So let's just check it. Select tool here. Oops. That's 20. As you see, and then this is also 20, as you see here. So this is perfectly in the center, left and right, and I can do whatever I want to do with it up and down now. So from that to that to that, perfect. Now let's see this line that keeps like sliding across the screen. Let's get, let's put that in the right spot. Let's go down. You're gonna see character select screen background. In the old Mugen, it, it kind of had a graphics folder, like this is DOS Mugen I'm talking about here. But um, you can use a separate um, SFF if you want for your select background. You do not. Most people do not. But you could. So I'll erase this because it's already commented out, so it doesn't exist. Now, the select background definition is going to be this, the scrolling background, which is not going to be scrolling anymore. And I'm going to change this to background. It's going to be the same standard sprite we've used before, same layer, same start, no velocity, no tiling, none of that. We don't need any of that for our screen pack because we're aiming for simple. And see, that's that's pretty simple right here. Look at that. Okay, now let's see. Uh, we need the character portraits in the slots, right? So we should really work on that. So we'll scroll up. As you see here big portraits. This is all related to the character's big portraits, that big kung fu man in the background. And this here is portraits. Portrait. This is the small portrait, which is what is um which is the small screen portraits that are inside the um the boxes. Now scaling one one was too big, so we'll scale it by half, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This will make it the proper size to fit in the um the select icons. As you see here, he kind of fits in there perfectly well. Let me just uh take a screenshot and zoom in 
and let's take a look at it. Okay, so you see he's off by one here and one here. So we'll move him right one and down one. So what do we do? Uh, portrait offset will be... Um, well, you know, you can leave the portrait offset alone and just do it from here. Yeah. So either you can do the offset to change it in the, the system file here or change it in the SFF. I'm going to change it in the SFF because I like to leave values at... Um, I like to leave the values at zero zero. Yep. Okay. So put all these to the same thing. Okay. Good. Okay. So now, if I were to check it again, there you go. He's in the box. Kung Fu Man in the box. What could be better? Now, the best way, you see Kung Fu Man's kind of off to the side here like this on the portrait. We don't want that. We kind of want our shape. So let's see. Um, oh, let me let me see I could plan this out now. Open and paint. Here's what's going to happen. Take this. Take this. Solid color, solid color. Four, eight, 16 4 8 16 okay and then two more for that and you know what forget that for now uh, I'm gonna put the other objects first I'll scale the big portrait down by half this way it'll look more like a reasonable size now remember, I told you screen packs are very technical, and this is why I kind of, I was kind of hesitant on teaching screen packs because it's really a lot of work. So now you see Kung Fu Man's picture, big portrait, big picture, blah, blah, blah. big picture here looks really nice, doesn't it? And then these Kung Fu Man portraits here are actually staying inside the box, which are great. Okay, let's see. Uh, let me find one of my characters and put them in there. Not these guys. Um, okay, not one of those guys. Here we go. Okay, let's take Raging Ken. The select screen I'll explain later. For now, I'm just going to fill it up with Raging Ken. Like literally fill it up with Raging Ken. The reason why is this way it populates the entire screen pack and I can see how to um, plan out the um, select.def. Oh my god, that is hideous. What the hell was I thinking? Okay, maybe not Raging Ken. Let's try this again with some other character. <laughs> Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Nash, Knight, Karen, Honda, Goku, Geese, Croy, Chin. Uh, oh, I have another Mugen here somewhere. No, 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 no. There we go. Uh, Donatello, Krauser. Okay. Raging Shingo should have a good portrait, I hope. Put Shingo in there. Copy his name. Paste it. Paste it, paste it, paste it, paste it. Copy again. And spam it. Take a quick look at how this looks. Good. That's actually a pretty good picture I have of him, too. Alrighty. Uh, it looks like we need a couple more boxes down there. That should fill it up well. Mm, yeah. Okay, a couple more. Uh, Jesus. See, I, I'm even counting. This is a lot of slots. Good, he fills up everything. He's actually more than enough... But um, this is what I'm going to use. 
Now I know the portraits kind of look really distant and looks like I could fill in a lot more, but because of my little design around the borders, it looks best like this. So let's get this um, character portrait um, holder in the game. This one here. This is player one, group seven zero, and this is player two, group seven one. So we'll go down to the select screen background again. Select BG. Now you can have these anywhere. As long as this says select BG, it's going to be read and played in the select BG def. It could be anywhere. It could be in the versus screen. But as long as it says select BG, it'll still read for the select BG. Which I found out the hard way. I was like, why isn't it showing up? Then I was like, oh, that makes total sense. Player one. Player two. Okay. Now this is going to be group 7 and this is going to be group 7 1. Start position I have total control of and uh, mass equals 1 so I don't see the transparency mask equals 1 so I don't see that transparency either. See they're right here I need to um, organize them back into the correct position. Um, this is kind of a guessing game here for me, so I'm going to put this on negative 200, and this is going to be 200. I'll lower them both down by, say, 30. And I'm only guessing these numbers because I've, I've done so many screen packs over the years, and I've messed with so many screen pack stuff that I can get the right values when I need to. Okay, so this looks pretty good here. Um, more to the left a lot. So next I'll try 300, 300. Uh, at first, use high values like hundreds, then use lower values like tens, and that looks pretty pretty damn good actually. I'm gonna lower this one by 299 to make it centerized, and this is all obviously too big. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, almost perfect. A bit too high there. But uh, I'll just fill up with another character slot. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely fill up with another character slot. Okay, so do 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 do. Um, columns, good rows, eleven rows. Position. Uh, let's try twenty, because zero is at the top, and the higher the number, the lower it goes. Good, good. I'm getting there. But now I'm starting to question if I really need this extra row because I don't think it'll fit properly now. Yes, that will not fit properly at all, but I'll just try it and see what happens. If it does fit, holy crap, it fit. Um, you know what I could do? Um, lower this by 17. And this would, uh, in turn, make them smaller. See, spacing is smaller. But this also throws off my uh, my t uh, ultimate X alignment that I had there. Uh, it's okay though. I'll fix that. Yeah, I'll definitely fix that. Um, okay, so I'll definitely lower this back down now because changing that altered it. Uh, I'm guessing numbers here. Okay, let's see how this looks. This is exactly four pixels, five pixels. That can't be helped. If it's off by one, you really cannot do anything about that. That's how Mugen is. This is 14 pixels, and this one over here is 29. Um, then let's see, the correct value for this would be um, 32. I'm just guessing this. I, I have no idea. Lots of trial, lots of errors, a lot, a lot of errors. This is the best way to learn. Just keep messing up. Keep learning from your mistakes. And hopefully it comes out right. 14. The hell did I take a? I didn't take a screenshot at all, did I? There we go.
and I know I'm not I'm not checking it to the end of the screen like I should, but I'm checking it to this line here because this line's kind of like part of the detail now. 19, and you are 24. Okay, so 21, 23. 22, 24. Okay, good. So this is the proper value, 34. And if I'm correct, this should centerize it all again just the way I want it. Okay, it's off by one. That's really cannot be helped. Either I change the um, the spacing, or you know, it. I, I deal with it like that. I guess it's okay. It's not really that, that much of an issue. But you know what? It, it might be an issue. See, this is the thing about using funky shapes like what I'm using here. You're very limited to what you can actually do, especially if you want to include things like the names for all four players, in case they're in a, a mode with that they use it. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Hmm. What can I do? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now I'll just go into the select file and set up some blanks. Blank. 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 Now what I'm, what I'm setting the blank is to give space because there's no um, icon. It's just a uh, you know just space. Okay. Blank, 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 blank. Okay, it's that. Delete all these shingos. So this is the first row, second row, third row. Fourth row, fifth row, sixth row. I forget how many more rows there are to put. Okay, next one I can put actual shingo, shingo, shingo. So because there is no blank, the officially blank is not a, a code in Mugen, but you can use it for screen packs. However, if there is a character named blank, it's going to show his portrait and all those blanks. So people tend to put like. Uh, gibberish there for something that probably would never really be there. So you see, I got this character slots working and all this. And the porches I'll have to align. The next episode, I will align it. I'm already in the hour mark and I, it doesn't look like I did much work, honestly. But uh, I'll take these off right now. Uh, show empty boxes. And uh, no, don't show the empty boxes. Move over empty boxes. And no, don't move over to empty boxes. Um, player start cell? Five. Wait a second, what does that do? I forget. Okay, so you see? The boxes aren't showing now, and um, I can't move over them. You still can't even see my select icon either, because it's not there. But, um, yeah, that's that's a, more or less how I, I start off the screen pack stuff, huh? You get the title screen, you get the little note, hi everybody! And then you get the uh, options, which is simple. i brought this down here to make it fit. Then you get your um, select screen stuff. And that's roughly half of the um, actual work for a screen pack. So I don't think that's, uh, that's too bad. Uh, I think I did pretty good. Uh, definitely a part two, and uh, maybe a part three, depending on how I uh, how things work out. So, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next part of Screen Pack Making, the model collection.